Hi, I'm Ben, a Technical Enablement Manager here at Sage, and in today's video we are going to cover the creation of a test account and how you can create an application in our app registry. Let's get started. Now we already have a short two minute getting started video that's available on the developer portal. It's part of the quick start guide, which is fine for going through the minimum things that you need to do. I would like to take you through all of the steps from requesting a trial account to begin with, to registering an application in our app registry, and how to configure Postman to use our first collection, as well as some of the potential gotchas that we have along the way. Something we'd love to introduce to you in the future would be a true developer sandbox environment for you to use, but currently don't have available just yet. In lieu of this, and to enable you to have an account that you can use to test your integrations with, we can offer you a production trial account that we can extend for 12 months or more if required. Getting a trial setup is really straightforward. Let's take a look. So here we are at sage.com and we will head across to the accounting area of the site. And as you can see here, we have three variants available. If you watched my previous video, an introduction to accounting, you'll know that it's important to ensure you target your integration at customers using the variants that your integration will require. So if you're not aware of that, it might be worth having a quick look at that video as well. Um, so you can create a trial for any of the variants. Uh, all you need to do is simply click on the link for the appropriate one, as you can see over here, where it's free 30 day trial. So on this screen, as you can see, you're required to pop in first name, last name, um, along with a valid email address that you do have access to. There'll be a code sent. So I'll just pop those in now. Next. So on this screen, you can see that it's asking about the business name. And this is just as the name would suggest, the company name that you want to appear in the accounting application. Don't worry about too much about getting it correct. At this point, you will have the opportunity to change it during the setup. So we're just going to put in some very, very original. Um, obviously there's an option there um, to pop in a telephone number. Don't worry too much about these next two sections. For the sake of this, it's not that important. Normally for trial accounts, we're interested in the industry that you're in and the number of employees, really just to get a feel for the kinds of businesses that are interested in the app, as well as the size of them. So I'll just pop down here, accept the terms, and we'll move on. So the next stage, as you'd expect, is to populate a pop a password in. So I will do that here. Click next. And I am indeed not a robot. So that's what we're looking at today. Oh, tractors, fantastic. Hopefully that's it. Good, good. Now, so this is what I meant earlier about the fact that you need access to that email address because we do send a code. So let's go over to this brand new Gmail account that I created just for this. Let's have a look at this code. And there we go. So once the instance itself is up and running, you'll come to these steps here. And they just allow you to configure the account in such a way that's going to ideally be representative of, I would think, the majority of your customer base. So again, as I said earlier, we've got the business name. We're going to keep that really original, fantastic one there. I'm just on my own here, so we'll just stick with a sole trader. Business trade and address. There we go, there's all of our fake details, lovely. And for the sake of this trial, I think what we'll do is we'll specify that we are VAT registered and we're gonna put in a really exciting dummy number, there we go. And that's it, we are all done. There we go, so now we've got our brand new, I'm gonna close all of that, but now you can see there, we've got our brand new trial account um, and what we'll do, I think, just to make things a little bit more interesting, when we get to Postman shortly, we'll go in and let's just quickly create ourselves a dummy contact. So you can see, we also have one for reclaimed VAT here. We're just gonna create another one. Uh, 
And there we go. So we've got our test contact sorted out there. Fantastic. I will also add the email address for developer services in the description for the video um, because all you need to do in order to have your trial account extended for 12 months minimum will be just to send them a quick email, just provide them with the email address um, and they will sort out the rest and let you know once that's done. Great, so that's the account sorted. Next, we'll have a look at what you need to do in order to register an app for use with the API. Going through this process is vital in order to make sure that you obtain the necessary credentials for authentication. So first, let's head over to the developer portal. We're over at developer.sage.com and in order to access the app registry, we'll go up to this profile icon on the right and we'll click that and you can see there that we need to choose app registry, but you can see there's an option for accounting separately. Now at some point we will only have just the one app registry, but currently we do have to keep them separate. So we will choose that. And here you have options to either use a regular email address to sign up, or you can also use your, your GitHub account. So for this, I'm just going to use my GitHub account because it's already signed in and authenticated. Once we're into the app registry itself, you can see on the left here, we have links for the quick start guide and then also actually creating an app from scratch and our API reference. For this, let's choose uh, create a new app. So that's what we're here for. And on the window that pops up there, you can see you've obviously got to give your application a name. And in this instance, it's really important um, because it's the, actually the name of the app that appears um, to the user when they're going through the authorization process, especially when they're, they're first authorizing the, the integration itself. So we're going to call this again. I'm going to continue with my extremely original naming test app. I'll leave my email in there. Um, next, we ask for a homepage URL. It's just one for the business. So for this, we could just put sage.com. Now, the callback URL is so important. And I must stress that you can have as many as you like. You would just have to add them as separate lines to this box. For anybody that doesn't actually know what the callback URL is, it's the address where your user will be redirected to after the authentication is conducted. So it's really essential for the entire authentication flow to work from end to end. So I'm just going to put in most, I'll say 1000, we'll leave it at that. And uh, we get refresh here. Great. So now we can see that we have an application that's been created. There's an option on the left here for image, which I just want to mention. You can change the image and pop in whatever you would like. You know, normally you would put a logo specific to the application or, or the company itself. Um, and again, along with the application name during the authorization process, this picture will show as well. So it just helps to validate that, you know, you are giving permission for a legitimate application to, to access your accounting business. So as I say, you can update the image here. Um, and then below we have summary of, of the key details we, we've created. And then on the right, we have obviously the reason that we're here, which is our application credentials. So we have the client ID and client secret that are hidden by default. Now, I'm probably going to get rid of this app after we've done this video. So I can show these and not worry too much about it. But you can click these buttons on the right here to copy them. So you save, you know, don't want to retype that, that's for sure. The bottom left hand corner, you've got an option to delete the application as well. You can come back into the app registry at any point to have a look at your applications as you saw them listed on the previous screen. Um, you can come in and, and update details if you need to, change logos if they change that kind of thing. Obviously double check client ID and secret. And, and more than likely one of the reasons you'd be in is to add to the callback URLs or alter them as well. And that's it. So now we have everything that we need to get started, an accounting business that we can access, along with a registered application and our credentials. Let's move across to Postman and see what we need to do to get started there.